Now the cables are starting to go backwards and forwards between Hollywood and London, and the telephone calls are starting to happen. Comes Thursday, and one of the top executives from New York got on the phone to me and said, look, Ronnie, this is, can't go on. Uh, uh, Judy wants another director brought in immediately. Um, what do you feel about it? And I said, well, you know, I, uh, obviously you, you can't fire Judy, so I, I mean, if you have to, you have to fire me, but I think we shouldn't let her get away with it. I think we should be strong. I said, it's very tough for me, believe you me, it's very tough to, to go on directing when I know that the actress is, is, really wants me removed, but I said, I think, I don't think you should give way to her. And so they said, well, look, if you are prepared to take it, we'll take it. Could you finish the film without her? It's <laughs> the first question. So you think a minute, you think, well, I suppose if we made Dirk Bogard narrate the whole story, <laughs> then <laughs> he, could, he could narrate the scenes that we hadn't shot. <laughs> but then I remembered that we had this enormous call at the London Palladium where we'd booked this theatre for the day and where we'd already put out a call for 1,200 extras uh, to fill this theatre, or not to fill it, but to fill it so it looked full. And uh, also, there was no film, there was no story at all without this last uh, big scene with her last big song, which, strangely enough, was a song, was a, a sequence straight out of Judy's own life because the sequence was a packed London Palladium ca who had come to watch, to listen to this actress singing on the stage. And the actress is an hour late and the audience are beginning to slow clap and they can't find her anywhere. And the, the whole sequence revolves around a no-show, which happened with Judy all the time in real life at these concerts that she did. And this was absolutely essential for the end of the film. So I said, well, I have to have the London Palladium sequence. After the London Palladium sequence, well, yes, maybe it would be all right. So they said, OK, we'll, we'll deal with that. Be ready to shoot on Monday. And we'll let the rest of the week go. Fine. That's when they cabled Judy and said, if you do not appear on Monday at 8.30 in the morning, we will shut the picture down and we will sue. Okay, Monday morning comes along. Here we have 1,200 extras filling the theater. It's 8.30. We're all ready for Judy. No Judy, of course no Judy. 9.30, no Judy. 10.30, no Judy. So I think, all right, I know what I do. I'll, I know the movements of the, uh, of the song. I know exactly where she's going to go. And indeed, I'd already heard, rehearsed with the camera the various movements with me playing Judy, so that, they, so that at least when she did arrive, we'd be very ready to shoot. Um, however, I'd now done all that, so there was nothing else I could do. And then I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll put on the playback, and I'll sing to the playback, and I'll make all the movements, and I will play Judy to the reactions from the audience. Because I wanted a lot of reaction shots, because when Judy does sing, they mean they're not quite like they are when the, the Beatles sing or the, Rock, the, the Rolling Stones sing. But nevertheless, they do in their, in their own way. They, they used to get very excited with Judy, and they used to cheer and, and stand up and move towards the stage and all of that. So there's me looking absolutely ridiculous, <laughs> singing to a playback to all these people and getting them to get. Now, by about quarter to 12, I suppose, this is done. Then again, we sit down. About quarter past 12, the makeup man, her makeup man, arrives on the set and says, Ronnie, she's in. Oh, I said, thank God. By the way, we had to get out of the theater at 5.30 because they had a show that evening at 6.30. So I'd only got till 5.30. So I said, oh, good, fine. Tell her to get made up and come on the set and I'll run through the song with her. So he went back. Later I, I learned that she said to him, does Ronnie think he's going to do the choreography of this song? <clears throat> Has he got it all worked out? Oh, good for him. 
you know, rather like that. Eventually, she comes on the set. About we broke. I broke very early for lunch. Then, when I knew she was there, I made a half-hour break for lunch. So, uh, by the time she got her makeup and everything, we'd had lunch and we were back. And it was now sort of I don't know about one o'clock. So she comes on the set with her curlers still in and all of that, and a dressing gown. And she says, well, what do I do? I said, well, Judy, I thought what might be a good idea is if you begin here, and if you move to that side of the stage for the first verse, back to center stage, over here, I said, we're going back, we've got a crane, we're going back, come out on the apron, because we'd built an apron out from the stage so that she could come right out into the audience. Come out onto the front of the apron, do your business there, come back, and that's where you look into the wings and you see Dirk Bogart is watching you. Because in the film, she says, well, you come back to the theater with me ha and stay with me. And he says, I'll stay with you until you're on your feet again. And he's not, he, he's, they're, they're parting, and they do part. But he says, I'll stay with you until I know you're all right. So he comes and he stands in the wings, and all the time she's doing this number, she keeps looking to him, and there he is standing, and he's watching her. And just towards the end of the song, when she's got herself really worked up into the typical Judy thing, she looks into the wings, and he's gone. But she finishes the, the song, and that, in fact, is the end of the picture. And so I explained all these movements to her. And she looked at me, and she says, that's all right, Pussycat. That's very good, Pussycat. Let's go. She went in. She did that song. She did the, 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 all the big, typical Judy stuff, including the bit in front of it where she comes on and everybody says, somebody says, where you been, Judy? And she says, uh, uh, a sprained ankle, which she did, you know? And she says, you like my coat? And it's a mink. And uh, they say, yes, we love it. She throws it on the floor and she treads on it, you know? She says, that's what I do with my old mink. And lines like that, all of which she did beautifully. In this case, I did have two or three cameras. We got the whole sequence by about quarter to five. We were out of the theatre by 5.30. And she came up to me at the end, and she said, we're all right, pussycat, aren't we? Now, by that time, I'm a, I, I was a wet rag, you know. <laughs> However, there was only about four or five more days for the picture, shooting now, six days, which went quite smoothly. There were no more, no more real problems out of that. Then we came to the looping. She had to do some looping. And she was very efficient at looping, very good at looping. We got the looping done, and then we found there was one more close shot that we had to get of her that, we'd, that I'd been meaning to take for a long time. It was on the lawn at Shepparton outside the building. And so we went out, and the, um, this close shot was the last shot. So there's the whole unit there. We're all there. And we're on this shot of Judy, and I think we get to take three. And I say, OK, cut. That's it, Judy, darling. It's finished. It's really finished. And she looked at me, and then she looked at all the rest of the unit. And she said, you'll miss me when I'm gone. And she walked, and that was it. We didn't see her again. But, and you know, even as I say it, it all, almost makes me cry. We missed her. We missed her so much. Because she was such a wonderful person. And of course, she never made another picture. And finally, what she'd been playing at for several years, which was, a, which was attempting suicide, always leaving the door open for somebody to, somebody to rescue her. This time, she didn't leave the door open wide enough, and indeed she died, and that was that.